All right, welcome to the August 26, 2024 Non-Credits Working Group meeting. Last one of the summer. Um, few topics to go over. Um, proposal to change the ARIES project and potential impacts on an on -credits. Um, Project status updates. Um, Mike, you want to do a roadmap discussion? B2 roadmap. Um, and yeah. then just a quick wrap up on where we are with the uh, an on credits project charter, which is done, and we really don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, reminder: This is a Hyperledger um, Linux Foundation meeting, so the Linux Foundation antitrust policy is in effect, as is the Hyperledger Code of Conduct. Please keep those in mind. I think we all know each other on this call, so I don't think there's any introductions needed, but is there any other topics to add to the agenda? All right. Um, so the ARIES project is kind of moving around. Um, Akapai is going to um, apply to move to the Open Wallet Foundation. That's triggering a few other changes where basically almost all of the ARIES project, if not all of it, will be migrated to either um, OWF, Open Wallet Foundation, or to DIFF, where the DIFF ones being where the DIDCOM specific pieces go. So ARIES kind of won't be anymore, and there will be a series of agents basically um in open wallet and then the didcom work um, based in diff um so that does sort of change where things are with certainly changes everything to do with aries um indy is going to stay at open uh, hyperledger for those again who are not aware i think we talked about it the last couple of weeks because of the project charter that hyperledger is going to become part of a larger LF decentralized trust. And that's part of what triggered this, um, this revamping of ARIES. Um, and so um, the question goes, what happens to Anoncreds? And maybe might be a roadmap discussion is just the right thing to, to have um, for that. So we'll see. Um, Any questions or comments about that and what it might mean? Well, I don't. I know Aries is mostly like standards and stuff, and so yeah, mostly like how how does that impact uh, this project per se? Because I know we're kind of like doing some standards as well. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. there's also code. Yeah, not it. it ARIES is a combination of a set of interoperability specifications and then implementations. The implementations are moving to um, Open Wallet. The specs are moving to DIFF because they're DIDCOM specs. Um, but it, it really, obviously, a non-creds exists and ARIES uses it versus the other way around. So it really doesn't have to affect the non-creds at all. Um, doesn't force any changes. Um, just that the focus of the community, it's still a Linux Foundation project. Open Wallet is still Linux Foundation, but it'll be outside of Hyperledger. That's, that's the difference. Okay, good to know. Okay. Um, next up, uh, Victor, uh, an update on the work you're doing for the revocation manager for Alisar. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah. I, I'm uh, do you want to share? Yeah, I'm still outside. It might be a bit noisy over here. Uh, so I'm fin I'm finishing up the uh, FFI functions on the Rust side. I have uh, the, the first version update on my GitHub, on the GitHub account. Nice. Good. And I'm still cleaning things up. Um, there are a few like error handling that I, that I that I missed, and um, I actually do want to meet with Mike and and Stephen like this week as well, like to talk yeah. about 
I, I still have a few concerns and doubts. Yep. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I'll move on to actually setting up the uh, the Python API, which I think it should be simple and fast. Yeah. Excellent. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, nothing to demo? Uh, I No, not yet. I, I don't, I'm okay. still testing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, next time. Yeah. So the just for the others, the, the main work Victor's been working on is that um, there was just a Rust implementation of the functionality and no um, wrappers around it for embedding it in um, Python or or JavaScript. So that's what Victor's been working on is an FFI interface around the Rust. Once that's there, then it becomes pretty quick to throw up the um, the um, an API and and uh, uh, enable building some client code to to interact with it. Okay. All right, Mike, you wanted a roadmap discussion. Yeah, so I know we have BBS plus on the roadmap and then Allosaur on the roadmap. Yeah. Are there any other predicates that people are just dying to have or are they okay with it? What's there? Or is there more like demos? Like I'm trying to figure out where is the bulk of the work? Do we need to update docs and take some more time there? Cause I can understand if that's the case. Uh, yeah. So mostly I'm trying to get community involvement of what would they like to see yeah. in terms yeah. of using it? Is it more friendly APIs? Like for example, using builder patterns instead of like just the full things that I have in like all the tests. <laughs> I know I met with Rudra this week, and that was one thing he suggested. That's why he's not here right now. Um, he is here. He is here. Rudra, oh. he is here. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So we met, and that was one thing we possibly thought of doing. Um, but anyway, just want to get some uh, community feedback on that. I've got so one thing. Really... To, uh, uh, Mark here. Yeah. Um, one thing to mention that I brought up before um, I have never been able to identify any decryption for the verifiable encryption. Um, so I would love, uh, again, to, to know where that is or to have that on this roadmap. Okay. Uh, I know I started working on that. I have like a bazillion things on my plate. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I will I will get that. Thank you. Yeah, that would be um, kind of necessary. Um, I, I did want to bring up this. So we have to-dos that we put in a while ago, um, separating out the cryptography into Agora. I think that's just an ongoing, that's work that's that's happening. Yep. Um, define and implement the objects exchanged by issuer and holder. So, so what we learned from... Um, what Victor did in his first work with an on prints, which is he printed out the objects. We got the set of objects that were there. And so the idea would be, how do you publish these objects such that they can be reused in the same, in a similar way to how it worked with an, an on prints V1? Is there a schema object? Is there a cred def object? If so, what do they look like? Um, We did want link secret. These are the things that I think are there. Um, we do want a specific link secret in an on cred. So not just the concept that you could put a link secret in, but there actually be a link secret itself always built into every credential. And then the option to add more if you want to. So just making use of the feature of the blinded um of the blinded um attributes for a link secret itself um i think okay. the swappability yeah swappability <laughs> that i've got the trade yeah. i'm testing out with the bbs now make sure yeah. it will work also for post quantum yeah um also man the post quantum keys are enormous <laughs> <laughs> like uh well like the public key now 
the cool thing about some of the post quantum methods is they support compression. Yeah. Um, not in the sense of like GZIP or anything like that. Like you could do that also, but I doubt it would get you much. Um, yeah. What I'm yeah. talking about is like, you know, ring learning with errors where you can compress the noise and other things like that and the polynomial size and that kind of stuff. Like the public key uncompressed is like two gigabytes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the compressed is like, uh, let's see, one megabyte. So that's not too bad. But one megabyte? The, so you go from one two megabyte. to one megabyte? That's compression. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, in order to use it, though, you have to decompress it. So Yeah, exactly. I, hope, I assume I, that. I, I, I hope you have a buttload of RAM to, yeah, <laughs> to really. use it. So anyway, it, it's nasty. But, I mean, that's the kind of stuff we kind of have to worry about. And, uh, you know, what format that is. Like, there's no tickets for is it the formats I have right now, is that acceptable or should we change them? You know, that's the type of thing. And so I know you've been working with Aries about like data modeling exchange and interop. So maybe that could come in handy here. And then, well, the other two things that I see here is the W3C verifiable credential and verifiable presentation format, the request format, um, and the last, the, the minor one, but I think it's actually reasonably important is being able to express things as date, date, time strings, but have them automatically converted into, um, uh, so that they can be used with uh, predicates. In okay. other words, convert them into a uh, canonical times. way to convert them into time, uh, a numeric, so that you can do a, a predicate on them. Yeah, the hard part is like, which type of time or like number do you convert it to? So, like for example, let's say I just did year, month, day. Do I represent that as the number of days since nineteen hundred, or do I do it as a Unix timestamp? So the way we've or done it is is uh, if it's date time, it's the number of seconds. If it's a date, it's just the integer version of the year, month, day. That's that's how it's um, that's how it's specified to be done in in something like Aries. And and the only thing we wanted to do was actually push that right into an on credits to say that is how it's done. End of story. These are the. Uh, I think what is the integer representing if it's just a date? What's that? Shoot, we've lost you. At least I don't. I'm not getting good audio. What about now? Is that any better? Yep. Yep. Okay. So. If it's just a date, what does that integer represent? So what we're saying is that the the user is what goes into the credential and what goes into the request, the predicate request is a ISO 860 date date or date time. And then what goes and then what gets calculated is is that that gets encoded as a either a date being an integer or a date time being an, a, a Unix time epoch time. And it be defined, it, it, it's, it's an encoding. It's essentially an encoding. I want to go from ISO 860 string of a date or a date time into a integer of either an integer date or a integer date time based on epoch. Right. So what I'm saying is, there's maybe a simple map to this. If it's a date time, it's the number of seconds since yes. the epoch. Yes. If it's exactly. a date, it's the number of days since 1900. Um, no, what we what we did with the date was just an integer date. 2024-08-26 as an integer. Oh, I see. So you just treated it as a raw number. Exactly. Yeah. 
Okay, that anyway. was my that was that was my question, but that works. Yeah. So that's that's a minor one. I think that one's easy to do, but it's it's just an encoding. So you just say this is how it gets encoded. Here's what you put as input. Here's what you get it as the encoded value, so that you can do predicates on it. Yeah, that's just like I've got numeric uh, claims. So you just put a date claim and a date time claim. Yeah, and that's it. That's yeah. a quick PR. I'll 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 pump that out tomorrow. Okay. And then I've got the verifiable encryption one almost done. I could probably just pump that out by the end of the week. I'll, oh, I'll add all three of those. Excellent. And then next week I could probably do the BBS with the signing API as well. So That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then trying to figure out how to get, I think this one could be the tricky one, which is, in order to get it used across, we need to be in W3C format, um, I think. And, and so that means defining what, what a credential looks like in that format. Do you have a presentation request format? Uh, you do. I, in in this library, I do. I don't know how it yeah. compares to the V the W three C one. Yeah. Well, W three C. Like I know they have like, like so that's a whole different question. But yeah, I'd like to, you know, if we're getting there, I'd love to look at that as well. Which is what does the request format look like, and then how does that compare to other ones, um, other presentation request formats? Can we align it? I'm certain we can. It's just the W3C one has certain fields that are required, like issue date. Yeah, that's that's, that's required these two, as opposed to the request format. Yeah, that's just a mapping, in my opinion. I hope so. Yeah, I think so too. I agree. So, okay. I'll just um, jump in there, if I may, to yeah. remind you guys that we think there should be an abstraction layer that, uh, uh, you know, means that you don't need to do those back and forth conversions. And we've made uh, quite a bit of progress, but um, uh, as ever, not as much as we would like. But we're still hoping to contribute something to demonstrate that this abstraction can exist. Um, but I would say we're at least weeks away from being able to do that. So we'll. Uh, uh, do you want to plan do... on presenting something a month from now? Like at this meeting a month from now? Um, yeah, we could plan on it. Um, where we get to is uh, we'll see. But yeah, we could put that as okay. like an objective. Yeah. Excellent. Love to see it. We've just, um, our intern has just finished and we had some unfortunate things with his phone being stolen and stuff like that. So we, we're left in a little bit of a um, uh, un uncertain state and not, where we, not quite where we hope to be. And so Harold and I will need to pick that up. And our, our intern was also our Rust teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so now uh, we slow down. <laughs> Victor's been doing really well with figuring out and dealing with Rust and figuring out how to do FFIs. <laughs> uh, right. So he's our new Rust teacher then, is what you're saying. I, I can <laughs> do that to talk too. to him. <laughs> I can be a Rust teacher too. Just reach out to me on Discord. I can answer those questions. Uh, I've been doing sure. Rust for, for since a decade, so I've got plenty of experience with it, almost yeah. since its inception. Right. And when, when you're reviewing our pull requests, uh, don't don't hesitate to tell us, you know, rudimentary stuff because we are very much beginners. OK, I can be ruthless if that's what you're asking. <laughs> that's not what I said. That's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Politely ruthless. There you go. Politely ruthless. Yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> OK. <laughs> this is not how you should do it, but you should try this. How's that? <laughs> I like the second part particularly. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I can do that. I've yes. been mentoring lots of people in Rust for years, so it's not a, it's not a problem. 
Oh, um, also, uh, Victor, I've got the Beaver triple stuff worked out finally. Oh, uh, it works. Um, I've got two methods, Steven. So maybe this is another abstraction layer. You okay. can generate one using oblivious transfer, and I've got that one done. And you can also do it with homomorphic encryption. So I've got that one done too. Um, and where so is that? Is that is that for that, the rev that'll be Alasor, yeah. Yeah. That's the MPC side of it. So yeah. That doesn't necessarily apply to a non creds because the non creds doesn't care how it's revoked. Right. But it's important to know for folks here, just so you know that the MPC site supports both methods, just in case you're asked. And what are the two methods again? Just so I can get a capture note. Oblivious, oblivious transfer and homomorphic encryption. Maybe it might make sense to make it its own repo because Beaver triples are very important to a lot of MPC protocols. Like they're used practically everywhere. So okay. maybe it makes sense to break, make it its own repo and then Allosaur can use it, but then any other repo could also. And it's called Beaver Triples? Yeah, so back in the 90s, I'm trying to remember his first name, Beaver came up with a way called it is Beaver's Trick, which was a way to simplify MPC operations by using what he calls Beaver Triples. So... There's a public component, which all people know, similar to keys, and the private component is like shares of three values, an A, a B, and a C. And the point of it is proving that A times B equals C. That's mm -hmm. what the triple stands for, but it's used all over the place with MPC. Like, for example, if you can do uh, ECDSA signing using triples. And what that does is if you have the triples, then you can skip a whole bunch of round robin back and forth talking because then you say, hey, we're just going to use this triple. And that's the only communication that needs to happen. <laughs> but if you've got one, for example. So it, it just goes quick. That's just one example. There's many, 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 many others. So. All right. And Rudra contributed a nice test for uh, a non-creds that PR was so merged this week too. Yeah. Um, thanks for that, Rudra. <laughs> You're very welcome, Mike. Thanks for your guidance and help also. Um, ZKP is using hardware keys. Um, I have not heard a lot. Evidently, there's process progress being made on that. Um, by by a team in Europe, um, there hasn't been much announced about it other than you know the papers we've seen before. Um, Mike, you talked I did, about. Oh, I, go I got an email back from Anna Lasinskia, who's one of the people helping with that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she did because I said, "Hey, just on I ha I got a copy of the preliminary. Yeah. What do you what more can you tell me about it? And she said, Oh, it's basically an interactive ZKP to prove that yeah, the hardware was used. <laughs> yeah. But evidently it's an interactive, but it's only a single in, in iteration. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was confused on. She said, Well, let me get back to you on that. And then that was the extent of the email. <laughs> yeah. So great. Um, you talked last time about um, PQ-based revocation, uh, and you were in the middle of that work. How did that go, Mike? Oh, yeah, that's that's what I was talking about. The keys are like two gigs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there's like one key. Uh, you're cut out again. Did you key start again? 250 megabytes. Oh, can you... Is it coming through now or my like, now it's coming through? Start robot. again on, on where you are. Oh, so the key I was talking about was the revocation key. The, yeah. the PQ credential key is about 250 megabytes uncompressed. 
Um, and then eight megabytes compressed. The signing key is nine megabytes. <laughs> it's huge. The revocation key um, is about 33 kilobytes, so it's pretty small. Those are key sizes. Okay. I'll try to capture those from the other. And and the algorithms, are the, the code all worked out? <laughs> um, Kind of. <laughs> uh, we're trying to optimize some things because there's some parallelism we can take advantage of. Mm -hmm. um, just on my lone MacBook right now, the... Not the ZKP generation, but like the signing of the witness to hand over to the user took 45 yeah. seconds. So that was quite slow. Um, the ZKP part was only like, let's see, two seconds. So that that's better, but not quite where I want it. It yields about a two kilobyte proof, which isn't that bad, but that's compressed. Uncompressed is 33 megabytes. You, you can tell uh, the compression algorithm is worth it. <laughs> Those are unbelievable ratios. Well, that's post quantum for you. Yeah, that's the ring learning with errors based, you know, where we do polynomials instead of lattices. It's all post quantum. So. So the idea will be to do all sorts of hardware optimization on compression and decompression. So that you can send them on a network fast. <laughs> yeah, well, like, for example, I did the. um like I, like I said, my box is like eight eight cores. Yeah. And so I rented a cloud server that was 32 cores and it ran 10 times faster. So, yeah. so there's some parallelism that we're trying to take advantage of. And then if you've got GPUs, you know, for that. So unfortunately, I don't think it's practical for <laughs> everyday hardware yet. Well, at least the... I mean, the prover is fine. It's the issuer, right? The issuer who's like signing the credentials is going to take a minute or two to, <laughs> to mm -hmm. issue a credential, which may or may not be that bad. Yeah. And just say, hey, come back later. We'll we'll have it for you. Wait two minutes and then email it to them or I don't know. what's However, they yeah, yeah. or click this link and download it, whatever the case may be. So it's not going to be instantaneous. That's super interesting. <laughs> Sorry, what is? What's super interesting? Um, the interactions are going to have to change. The user experience. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Quantum, post-quantum is not fast. <laughs> yeah. At least with current hardware. Mm -hmm. not unless my phone gets 64 cores, and that would be awesome if I could ever have a phone that could afford 64 cores. <laughs> BBS signatures, um, we'll be working on that in the next week or so. Um, any more updates yep. on audits? Uh, audits are done. So um, I've got the reports. I'll publish those when I publish the crate. Okay. Um, you talked last time about some changes, ripple effects. Is that work done? Uh, no, the... The Gennaro ripple effect isn't done, but the VSS one, I just have one more thing to tidy up and then that will be done. Mostly has to do with allowing uh, participant numbers that aren't sequential. They could be random or 256 bits or, you know, whatever the case may be. It's not necessarily a security vulnerability. It's just a feature. Yeah. Sorry that our random. Okay. Well, think of it. We'll think of it like this. You have a network like lit where nodes come and go. Yeah. And so if they come and go, 
and you're doing sequential numbering, you're like constantly dropping numbers halfway through right. the sequence and reordering them and then people get renumbered. And so it's just painful. So an easier way is just to sign them at one big random number that they use forever, just like a key. So, but the number can be public because it's just like, we call them peer IDs, but that's the idea. So not, nothing old's getting ripped out. It's just enabling a new feature. Okay. All right. Um, the last thing I had was just um, update on the project charter. And basically that's all done. We have a document here. We've done the PRs that we talked about in this plan. Those have all been published and the people at Hyperledger are happy with us. <laughs> so that's done. Um, that's what I had for the um, discussion today. Any other topics? Um, outside of this group, is non-creds growing <laughs> interest from the other places you go? Um, and non-creds continues to be used and people are looking for what's next. So a non-creds is used in a lot of places, but it's not clear that V2 is going to be the next place to go. Um, and that's the big message that I've been trying to say for the last little while is, you know, that there's all sorts of people working in all sorts of different areas on CKPs for verifiable credentials. And it's not clear which is the, who's going to win the next round. And that's what I'm trying to figure out how to deal with. <laughs> um, that's where the, you know, the, the ability to have the EDDSA based ZKP for um, for at least selective disclosure and binding um, done the the work being done at at W three C um, yeah I I don't see it lots of people coming on to these calls and 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 jumping on to helping out with the b2 spec no well as far as competition goes i haven't seen a lot done in the competition world either that they're practical yeah. and v2 is the only one that's practical as far as i can tell mm -hmm. i mean doc is talking about what they've got in their bbs implementation um, but that's the only other practical one that I'm aware of. Um, and, and so, yeah, it's being used in, in several areas in, I believe being used, that's what's the basis for the, um, VCDI work. Well, just keep plugging along then. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Mike and Victor, let's coordinate for a meeting this week. Um, prefer mornings. So let's see if we can figure out on Discord um, so we can uh, get that done. And then um, Harold and Mark will plan on this. This. Uh, so two meetings from now, the, the next one at this time slot, um, we'll assume, you know, we'll check in beforehand, but assume you'll do a presentation on that uh, abstraction layer that you're talking about and the progress you've made on that. Sound good? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. All right. Well, that's our meeting for today. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks all. See ya. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye.